tested. If you're like me, you probably have hundreds of gigabytes of video stored on your computer that you've ripped from DVDs or other home video sources. But that's where these files are likely to stay, archived on a local hard disk, NAS box, or even a portable USB drive. And that's pretty unfortunate. Because while watching an old episode of The Simpsons on your 24-inch computer monitor is fine, some movies deserve to be seen on the big screen TV in your living room. That's where set-top boxes like Western Digital's WDTV Live Hub comes in. This is the fourth generation streaming media player in the reputable WDTV family of products. The first WDTV was only able to play videos from a connected USB drive. The second WDTV Live model added an Ethernet port for local network playback. And the most recent WDTV Live Plus included Netflix streaming support. The new WDTV Live Hub goes one step further, adding a built-in one terabyte hard drive and a revamped menu interface. Internally, this product doesn't differ much from the WDTV Live Plus released earlier this year. Both are powered by a 500 megahertz Sigma Design system on a chip, which lets it smoothly process high bitrate 1080p video files in a wide variety of codecs, XVID, MPEG, H.264, and WMV9, to name a few. Video containers ranging from AVI to MP4 and MKV are accepted, including embedded subtitles and multiple audio tracks, a feature still not in more common mainstream players, like game consoles. It'll also play back uncompressed FLAC audio and accept videos with Dolby Digital or DTS audio tracks. But robust format support is something we've come to expect from the WDTV, so there really aren't any compatibility surprises here. In my tests, the only files the WDTV Live Hub had trouble playing or very high bitrate uncompressed video recorded with professional DSLR cameras. For most people, that shouldn't be a problem. What's new about the hardware, though, is the inclusion of a 2.5 inch, one terabyte internal hard drive. With a drive, you can import the entire contents of attached USB stick or simply drop files in over the network. This turns out to be extremely useful since I always found it a hassle to move files from my computer to a portable USB drive whenever I wanted to watch a new movie on the big screen and not having to have an unsightly USB drive tethered to the set-top box during playback is also a plus, especially since there are only two USB ports on the Live Hub, one of which I sometimes use for a USB receiver from my wireless keyboard. Local playback from the drive was also considerably smoother than streaming over a network. Even though the Live Hub has a gigabit Ethernet port, the straight streaming of a very large 1080p file was inconsistent and definitely not as smooth as when videos are transcoded with DLNA UMPNP servers like Twonky or PSP Media Server. 720p and standard def videos stream fine though. My recommendation is to sync your large video files with the Live Hub using the included software or Microsoft's free SyncToy app. The built-in hard drive also dictated the new shape of the player, which now looks more suited for your TV stand than the previous model. The wider shape also allows for a full suite of output ports on the back including HDMI, component, composite audio and video, and optical out. The long requested addition of a physical power button is also nice for those of us who don't want to fiddle with the remote. Speaking of the remote, the Live Hub's new infrared remote design is more substantial than previous versions. There's now a numeric keypad to bookmark favorite content. Unfortunately for owners of Logitech's popular Harmony Universal remotes, the WDTV Live Hub doesn't have a full featured preset. I found it quicker just to use the bundled clicker. The WDTV Live Hub also has built-in apps like Netflix, Pandora, Facebook, YouTube, and Blockbuster on demand. But the quality of these apps varies widely. Facebook and YouTube both make really good use of the colorful new interface nicknamed Mochi, which are found to be quite snappy and almost as fast as the Apple TV. Netflix and Blockbuster, however, launched into separate UIs and were painfully sluggish. The Netflix implementation in particular was really disappointing. It lacks basic search functionality, a far cry from the current standards set by Roku, Apple TV, and even the Xbox 360. The new software also restricts firmware hacking. Hacker-friendly firmware on the previous WTVs catapulted the brand into stardom among AV enthusiasts. That's an understandable limitation given Netflix DRM restriction, but it's not a fair trade given the poor Netflix client. Where the WDTV Live Hub excels is with the straightforward task of liberating your ripped videos from your home computer, especially if you don't have a fast enough home network to stream that video. At $200, the WDTV Live Hub isn't a worthwhile upgrade for existing WDTV owners, 
but it is a fine companion for stream-only devices like the Apple TV or the Roku XDS. For Tested, this is Norm. See you next time.